Hey there, the topic of this video is Android life cycles. And specifically, I would like to answer the following question. What are life cycles in Android apps and why are they needed? So all Android developers know that there are life cycles and we use life cycles, but rarely ever do we pause to think, well, conceptually, fundamentally, what life cycles are. So that's the topic of this video. And let's start with contrasting libraries and frameworks. Again, something that all Android developers use this terminology, but do you know what's the difference between a library and a framework? Well, the difference is that frameworks are libraries that utilize inversion of control paradigm. So what's inversion of control then, right? We just substituted the question of what is a framework with a question, what's inversion of control? Well, let me explain that. Imagine that you have kind of time axis going from the top to the bottom on the screen. And now I'm going to use so-called UML unified modeling language sequence diagrams. So first of all, let's discuss direct control. We have our application and some library that we use inside the app. That's the lifetime of our application. I remind you that time goes from top to bottom. And at some point in time, we need to use this library. So what do we do? Well, we issue a call to the library and inside the library, there is some process going on, some flow executing. And when this flow completes, the library returns a response to us. Now, this response might be in the form of just return value, or it might be in the form of a callback. It doesn't really matter. So a library performed its function and then it returns. And pretty much the flow is complete and the library becomes idle after it completes this flow. Okay, that's a direct control. Our application sends some request to the library. Now, what's inversion of control? Well, once again, we have our application and we have framework this time, not a library. And that's the lifetime of our application and that's the lifetime of a framework. Now, please notice the lifetime of a framework can be actually longer than the lifetime of our application. And that's not necessarily the case. Maybe your application just invokes some framework like library, but in the case of Android framework, that's exactly the case. Android framework will be alive longer than your application in most cases. So what happens when we use a framework? Well. Framework actually issues calls to our application and our application then invokes some flow, internal flow, which for example, computes results and then our application returns response to the framework. So please notice how we inverted the flow of control. In direct control, our application issues the first call. So basically our application has control. And when we are talking about inversion of control, the framework will be the one issuing the first call and therefore the framework has control. Okay, that's the meaning of inversion of control. Instead of our application being in control, now the framework takes over. So how is this related to Android framework? Well, imagine that we have a device. Well, don't imagine we have a device. Everyone has a device, right? And this device takes in many inputs, sensors, network, and timers, internet timers, you know, to compute time and scene time. And it has outputs, for example, the screen and sounds and rotation, but let's say screen to be simpler in this case. And also we have our application. And of course we write application to do something with the device, right? So we want to kind of interact with the device and have control over some of its functions. But we do not interact with the device directly. Instead, we have Android framework basically kind of sitting in between our application and the hardware. And this framework interacts with the hardware on the one side and with our application from the other side. Now, of course, you know that it's not exactly just the framework. The framework is a wrapper for us of Android operating system, the entire OS. So when I say Android framework here, I really mean the framework and the operating system that sits behind this framework. But just to simplify the diagrams, I'm just drawing the framework. All right, so the framework sits between our application and Android device. Now, who has control over what's going on? Well, let me demonstrate you something. Imagine that we have multiple applications. Again, you don't need to imagine. All of us run multiple applications on our devices. And let's say that we want to launch from our application some other application. What's the flow of control here? And you might say at this point, okay, my application sends intents to launch another application, so I'm in control. My application is in control. But no, it's in the name intent. It's not a comment, it's intent. So your application politely asks from Android framework, could you please, if you don't mind, launch that other application for me? You send the intent not to another application, you send it to Android framework. 
and then Android framework decides whether this intent is justified, whether it honors it, or it just discards it. So actually your application does not communicate with other apps. It communicates with Android framework. And then Android framework, if it's kind enough, will route your intent, your kind of uh, request to another application. So actually it's Android framework that controls all these applications. These applications do not interact directly. They just send requests to Android framework, politely asking it to do something on their behalf behalf. So Android framework sits right there and controls all these applications. And how exactly does it do that? How it controls all these applications? Well, it uses life cycles. So that's where life cycles come into the picture. Now, this might sound a little bit complicated. So let me kind of deep dive into one additional level of abstraction. So let's discuss finite state machines. Now, if you don't know what finite state machine is, I won't go into explanation of this concept in this video. Instead, I will link to my article on the subject so you can read it and get back. If you don't know what finite state machine is, that will be one additional benefit for you from uh, this video. So we have a system-wide finite state machine. So imagine that's the finite state machine of the entire Android operating system. And inside this operating system, several applications can execute, right? So we have some application, let's say our application, and this application has a standalone finite state machine. So the application can be in the state, for example, not launched or launched and active or in the background. Or for example, when the process is killed, the application can be in kind of hibernated state. So these all are states of one single application. And therefore the finite state machine corresponding to one single app is nested inside the finite state machine corresponding to the entire Android uh, operating system because the entire system might be, for example, in the dose mode, right? The entire system, system-wide dose mode and the apps just react to that. And inside each individual app, we have additional components, for example, activities which have their own finite state machines or services which have their own finite state machines. And of course, we don't have just one single app. We have multiple apps running on the device and other applications can, for example, have activity finite state machine. And within that finite state machine, we have fragment finite state machine, etc. another application that uses broadcast receiver and a service. So these are different applications and they have each individual a finite state machine corresponding to it. Where this finite state machine resides? Inside the application? No, no, no. It resides inside Android operating system, Android framework basically. And Android framework manages the state of these applications by itself. And as we have already mentioned, there's this nesting of finite state machines, one inside the other. And therefore life cycles, the life cycles of the application and the components inside the applications are hierarchical finite state machine or machines, if you want to look at it as multiple machines, implemented inside Android framework, actually inside Android operating system, of course. So life cycles are the internal implementation of final state machine, one or more final state machines, and nested one inside another inside Android operating system, Android framework. So what's life cycles that we use inside our applications? We don't implement final state machine. We do not manage the state. We do not store the state, right? So what are the life cycles that we use inside Android applications? Well, inside Android apps, we don't use life cycles. We use life cycle methods. And these methods are notifications from the Android framework about changes in the state of one or more final state machines corresponding to our applications. So again, Android framework, well, actually Android OS, manages extremely complex finite state machine, hierarchical finite state machine or finite state machines, however you want to look at it, uh, internally. And whenever the state of this finite state machine, you know, either of them changes, Android framework knows which companies, which applications and which companies inside those applications are affected and delivers notifications to these companies about these state changes. And these notifications take form of lifecycle methods. So, our applications are kind of in control, under control of Android framework. And Android framework, whenever some important uh, state change happens, just notifies the application that, hey, something happens. Maybe you want to take uh, action on this specific event. So here, I give you this lifecycle callback. I invoke it. Now take it from here, do whatever you want. And that's what life cycles are. Life cycles are finite state machines inside Android framework, Android operating system, and life cycle methods are simply notifications from Android framework about changes in the corresponding finite state machines. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.